now it's recording so that I can reshare it with everybody. Um, let me check in on the chat. How are you guys doing over here? Uh, do, do, do. Good start really to teaching kids. But Stop the 7-7. Seven, seven. I haven't heard of that one before. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Michelle. Yes, I'm a dog cancer support group, and there are all sorts of natural drugs you can get from anywhere. That's ridiculous. Hi, Camille. Nice to see you here. Stop the 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, wait. I need, I need to check this out. I've, I've seen uh, web pages that do education, but I haven't heard of this one. Stop the 7-7. Seven, seven. What is this? Are your kids and dogs safe? 77% of dog bites come from family or friend's dog. That means these aren't crazy, stray, vicious dogs. They are pet dogs. Yeah, absolutely. We can do something to change it. Contrary to popular belief, bites really rarely happen out of the blue. Yay! Singing my tune. Your kids' actions can play a huge role in how safe they are around the dogs. Success is all about education. There are trainers who arrive, ready to present. Have fun, interactive talks to kids from preschool to elementary school. Click here to find a presenter in your area. Ooh. Oh, it's a Gmail link. Okay, well, I'm good. I thought it was like a search where you could search by names and people. Cool. Love this. I'm going to have to save this somewhere. You can become a presenter too. Cool. And their videos. Oh, I need to save this. Wait. Where do I want to save this? Do you see all my bookmarks? These are all my tabs. Does anybody else have tabs on their bookmark bar? That is this bad. <laughs> like, look, I have, I have here on our dog info, and I have service dog info, puppy barriers, new puppy, dog podcasts stuff about shot collars, dog communication, separation anxiety, and I have like cat info, behavior modification. <laughs> I don't know what local places is. I haven't looked at that one in a while. But yeah, like, it's ridiculous. Okay, stop the 77. Uh, I don't know, I think I just did 100 dog info is where I need to put it. Okay, there, saved. Thank you, Liz, that was great. Some people will try anything when their dog is sick. It's really sad that people exploit their desperation. Speaking from experience, Michelle says, people will do anything when they feel desperate to save their pups. Yeah, yeah, but what happened to the veterinarian in that process though? My common sense prevailed, I'll never give Banjo anything before I knew it was safe. Does Banjo have cancer, Michelle? I hope he doesn't. No parrot tab? Listen, don't get me started. <laughs> Liz. <laughs> I think it's mostly, wait a minute. I think it's mostly under B mod. Um, applied functional behavior analysis. Listen, you know, I think ever since I got my new laptop like a few years ago, like, I don't know. There is... And my, maybe I should get back into the parrot stuff because I used to be on all the chat boards. I used to do freaking everything. And oh gosh, I was the worst troll when I was younger. Like you guys don't wanna know. I, I would troll people on the internet for fun because I was bored. <laughs> I don't want that to come back out. So I'm like, I don't know, do I wanna do chat boards anymore? I feel like the urge would just like pop up and I'd be super sarcastic about some stuff. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, so we found about the Collegeville man. How are, how is he being prosecuted? I'm sure they said it in the video. I just missed it. Like, okay, if convicted, maximum possible sentence of 32 years. Really? Oh my god! How wait? How do animal abusers get like less years than people selling fake dog drugs? I, I need to, I need someone, I need an expert to explain this to me because I, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew more. Oh, this one. Okay, wait. I love this one. It's a terrible news story. It's a terrible thing that happened. What is going on here? No. It's a terrible thing that happened, but... 
Okay, this is a big one, right? So you guys know, you know, that I came working from the zoological field, right? I went to school, I got my undergraduate in integrative animal biology, minor in psych, and I went into the zoological field, right? I volunteered, I worked in the zoological field for a while. Let me see, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, like somewhere around eight years, okay? And um, <laughs> everybody thinks otters are cute, okay? Let me show you how cute otters are. You are, in some of the places I've worked, not allowed to handle them, don't get buddy-buddy, you have to raise them a certain way because they can get nasty. And this is exactly why they told us, you know, otters are not cute. Don't think of them as cuddly. They are not house pets. They are nasty. Oh, come on, sound. A News Channel 8 exclusive, a Tampa Bay mother tackles an otter to protect her family. Yeah, this aggressive otter, I mean... This Side note, um, these newscasters, I came from the Tampa Bay area, so these are like my newscasters locally. Um, but I've been up in PA for like four years now, so it's, I don't know. They were my newscasters. Now you're not. You're shunned forever. Goodbye. These otters can be aggressive, and he's still out there somewhere, and residents are told to be on high alert. Our Polk County Bureau reporter, Stacey DeSilva. Well, the scary thing is, too, I, otters are mammals, and they have the potential to carry rabies. I, I don't know of any current rabies otters out there. Um, I've never personally heard of a case, but like, it's possible because I mean, they're mammals, right? And I, maybe they're super territorial. Maybe she was like near one of their dams. Maybe they had like pups nearby. I don't know a whole bunch about otter biology, but I do know you don't want to cuddle them. Joining us live from Lakeland. Uh, they say this is rare, but my oh my, when it happens, what a story, right, Keith? Great blue heron. Absolutely. See the great blue heron back there? An aggressive otter to attack people like They're everywhere in Florida. There's a couple in Pennsylvania. Into this house. And officials say, experts say, the otter was not acting normal. Ooh. My husband was like, Kate, you just, like, alligator wrangled an otter in the living room. An otter learns you don't mess with a mother's instincts. Whoa. I think life is full of Whoa, did she say wrangled one in her living room and like walked into their house? Do you know how big an otter's head is? They are very chunky. They have very short, strong, thick necks. I don't know how you would restrain one of those. I mean, I would imagine I'd want to pin his head to the ground, but then they have that long wiggly body. They could probably like move around or twirl. And I just, <sighs> man, what? Just stay away. Just get a broom and... Push it out the door. Just why? What happened? She seems fine. She seems happy. Scooter out before dawn Tuesday morning. Scooter had found an enemy. Like sprinted to the back door. It's a Frenchie. And he like all I saw was like a like a big like black ball like all over the place. And so he like stumbled in the door. And then I tried to shut it as fast as possible. But then, like, the otter got stuck. By this time, the whole house is awake. So, mother, Christina, was the otter, like, attached to the dog or just running after the dog? <laughs> wait, wait, let's, let's, let's hear that again. I love, I love that. <laughs> okay, A, A plus for the description. I love it. A plus. Wait, you had it? You had it? By the tail? Oh my lord. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so the daughter was bitten. Not mom who's holding him by the tail, but the daughter was bitten somehow. If he comes up right now in front of me. We call Dustin Hooper of All Creatures Wildlife Control. If it happens, just hold my sunglasses. He tells Eight on your side he's never seen an otter act like this. See, yeah. On shore going That's what's concerning. Something not right. Usually they see you, they're gone. Yeah, that, and I'm worried about... Um, so Hooper gave the E-Works his business card and said they can call... 
yeah, and like that's that's the thing I'm worried about would be rabies because that I mean that's not normal for a while they don't do that. Normally, oh X, there's the X. <clears throat> Normally, you know, just like he said, they would go and leave. Um, but again, I did I don't know if they're like more territorial, but it sounds like they're not. So my concern is definitely um rabid because if they're seeking you out to kill you <laughs> or kill your dog. Maybe it just started with the dog and it accidentally happened, you know, it was just so focused on the dog, it ran after him into the house and then it just found itself in a situation it didn't want to be in, right? Because it didn't sound like it was going after the people. If anything, the daughter probably got in between the otter and the dog, tried to separate and do something, got bit in the process. I mean, this happens with dog fights too, where dogs can be so into it, people try to separate the dog, but then people get bit because the dog's just reacting whatever's touching him the closest, trying to, you know, get out of the situation. Um, so yeah, I feel like, okay, this just updated. Well, I did not tell you to refresh. Why are you refreshing? That's not helping. Yeah, I feel like that's probably what happened is, you know, the dog probably got really close, might have even been like trying to chase after or look at the otter. The tail, <clears throat> like a oh my lord, this lady. She just, she was reveling in this experience. Her daughter, yeah, her daughter got bit, but she enjoys telling this story. And it looks like her daughter's handling it well, too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, that otter better run. Um, hopefully he does not have rabies. Oh, hashtag only in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what else in the comments here? Oh my goodness, look at all this. Okay, let me catch some comments here. Oh, he died in July. I'm sorry about your banjo, Michelle. I'm sorry. I can talk about dog cancer stuff. Yeah. Alts? Not property campaign. I don't know what that is. That sounds like it's like dog stuff. Um, I've seen presentations specific to New York. They're working on it. Yeah, isn't ALDF, isn't that like similar to and or worse than PETA? like Animal Liberation Front or something? I don't know. I uh, in the zoo aquarium world and the more animal welfare, somewhat anti-cap. Not sure what you mean by anti-cap, Liz. Did you ever see the wild parrots in the Tampa Bay area? Listen, I had, I knew some people who had some wild blue and gold macaws um, in Miami. I definitely, I've seen wild, when I was living in the Tampa Bay area, I saw wild parakeets and they were like standard green, no weird colors, like green colored, wild colored type parakeets. I've seen mitered conures. I've seen cherry headed conures. I've seen a lot of Nandes and a lot of Quaker parakeets. Those are, that's about my experience with the parrots in Florida. Yeah, Nandes outside Olive Garden. Nandes are fairly common. I'm surprised. They don't even build nuts, nests like Quakers do. You've seen, yeah. And you know, uh, Liz, you said you've seen wild Quakers in Connecticut. There's actually wild Quakers in New York. Somewhere. I don't know where. I'll have to look it up again. Uh, but there are wild Quaker parrots in New York and they like survive the winter, right? And I'm assuming it's because of the giant colony nests that they build, but it's really quite amazing. You need the footage of this otter. Why? Michelle, why do you need footage of the otter? Because the way it's acting, like because of the neurological ways. And I think it, it rabies affects the gait too, right? It kind of makes it weird. Should be pets, not property. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've heard some good arguments why pets should be property too, because it helps protect them in certain aspects. Yeah, ALF is bad. Liz says they're fantastic ARA people. <sighs> you listen, you got you've got to tell me like what this is spelled out. Like ARA, ARA to me means macaw. Like ARA macaw, you know, it's a macaw. <laughs> Ammo League Defense Fund. Okay, interesting. I have not heard of that before. 
anti-cap, anti-captivity. Oh, yeah, well, listen, most people shouldn't own dogs. I mean, no one's gonna be perfect. Everyone's still learning, you know? Nobody does things because they hate their dogs. They just don't know, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, unless you're telling me about the sanctuary you were volunteering at. Yeah. Okay, what's the next story? We are like, what's that? Feds considering, oh, this one's good. Okay, feds considering new rules for service animals on flights. So there are, um, you have the ADA laws that kind of give guidelines for service dogs. You have the something of transportation. Again, this is close to an hour after my bedtime. So let me see how good my memory is. I'm sure this, this article will tell us a little bit more. There's um, yeah, DOT, Department of Transportation, and the housing. What's the housing? FHA, Federal Housing something, right? So you have those three laws that kind of govern the service dog industry, emotional support animals, and just like, you know, like the basics, the basic guidelines for, and laws for these dogs, where they're allowed to be in housing and transportation, all this other stuff. So if you're not already aware, the DOT does have new laws, uh, considering uh, who can travel for therapy dogs and emotional support animals versus service dogs. And interestingly, like, so all these three laws, they are so jumbled together, they don't really cross-reference each other and they don't follow the same rules as the other ones. So it's it's like a big pudding of a mess. And I don't know who, why, how people are coming up with these laws, especially for the DOT. And I was reading over some of the legislation the other day and for, they are allowing specific airlines to ask for documentation for emotional support animal or a psychiatric service dog, which shouldn't be required for a psychiatric service dog. It should not be treated the same as an ESA, number one. But all other service dogs, they don't need to have documentation because it's following the ADA. Why they're singling out psychiatric service dogs, I don't know. Um, cause it's not following the laws of the ADA. So this is, this is where the pudding soup of gross combination is coming up. And they wanted a letter and I think they said they wanted to like see the dog. Um, and there was something to do with larger breeds. I'm gonna have to look at the, the laws again and get it be more on my game. But anyways, it's all a big jumble of mess. Nothing really makes sense together. And it's... They're trying to crack down on the non-trained, poorly behaved emotional support animals. And I think they're saying now that it's only dogs and miniature horses that are allowed on flights. Like they're obviously they're not gonna try to, they will let um, airlines choose if they wanna allow peacocks on and such, right? So they can be turned away. So let's see what does it say. Emotional support animals would not be considered a service animal under newly proposed rules from the U.S. Department of Transportation. That's not new. Emotional support animals have never been considered a service animal, so I don't know where that's coming from. That's, that's stupid to me. Many think pet owners are stretching the good taste of what an emotional support animal really is, especially when it comes to traveling. That's true. I'll give them that. The federal government seems to agree, noting that every year it gets more and more complaints about service animals. Well, then it's not a service animal. In particular, a growing number of incidents involving animals that don't have adequate training. Yes, absolutely. But they're not service animals. Under new rules considered by the DOT, that could all change. The rules, when was this posted? Yesterday, really? Are they redoing the rules again or is this just an old update? I don't even know what, what's WTOP? What's WTOP? Washington's top news. I don't even know. The rules available for public comment would define service animals, which by law have to be allowed onto flights as dogs that are individually trained to work or perform tasks for the benefit of a person with a disability. Yes, service animal, not, not emotional support animal. Emotional under a newly proposed law, like this, again. 
They're not the same thing. No one said they were different. I think it's more of an education of who who's bringing these animals on. In particular, the rules say emotional support animals will no longer be considered a service animal. Again, they've never been considered a service animal. People that don't know what they're doing consider them service animals. Can they also consider them therapy animals? Because they interchange all these words because they have no idea that they're separate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little passionate here. A lot of this stuff happens out there already. Okay, he says he runs into problems with different airlines, a lot of different accommodations. Yes, that's what I just kind of told you guys about earlier. You can make anything an emotional support animal. This is also true. If it makes you happy and you like petting it, you can have an emotional support iguana. Yes, you can and you do. But does that mean it needs to be out in public? In my opinion, as someone who has been in this industry, absolutely not. And when he says out in public, it almost sounds questionable if he knows the laws concerning service dogs and, you know, emotional support animals. Because emotional support animals do not have access to where service dogs are allowed. Service animals are more covered. Service animals are not covered under the ADA, right? They are more covered over the DOT, which we're reading an article about right now, and the Federal Housing Administration. That's where ESAs are covered under. There are no guidelines for ESAs and behavior in public. So don't take them out in public. It's that simple. Um, and again, yeah, it can be an iguana. And again, this kind of goes into the idea where people just don't, you know, it, an iguana, unless you raise it from birth, to be comfortable going out into public and not, you know, iguanas can be a dangerous weapon. I, I don't think people realize too how dangerous undomesticated species can be because an iguana, if he's upset, he's going to use that tail and he can slice your skin open. If he gets your face, your cheek is gonna be ripped open. I don't think people understand this. Um, and most pet iguanas do not get out for that kind of socialization. Am I wrong here? Like, if you want to have an ESA that's even going to go on flights, get the iguana trained. Like, who's saying you can't train an iguana? Who say that, right? Because you can, by the way, you can train an iguana. <laughs> um, but it's a little ridiculous to expect an iguana to be out for so many hours because even for the uh, American Zoological Association, the AZA, which manages, it's kind of an association that sets guidelines for a lot of zoological institutions to make sure animals are being well taken care of and they kind of have like, you know, rights and resting periods. When I used to work for a, an aquarium, we would do these shows where we would have, you know, like little educational shows during birthday parties and we would take out like a bearded dragon or a little red-eared slider. And we would take them out and they had mandatory, according for the AZA, mandatory amount of time where they could be out, which I think at maximum was like 15 minutes. And then they had to have like a rest period of like at least double of that. Um, and you had to rotate, you had to have so many animals because you had to rotate them out and you couldn't, you know, like overstress them. And having an iguana out for several hours in the day probably isn't even good husbandry practice for that animal. I'm just saying, especially one that's, doesn't get out, wasn't raised from birth, and be out and about, used to all these things. So this guy says, new rules wouldn't impact him at all since his dog is specially trained to do a number of things that help veterans from suffer from nightmares and trauma, traumatic flashbacks. I hope so, because again, if that's what it is, your dog is a psychiatric service dog. And according to the laws I read the other day, directly from the DOT, they would expect you to have paperwork, which is ridiculous. I don't know what's going on with this stuff. It's a little ridiculous to me. New rules were made public on January 22nd. See, okay, this is probably exactly what I was looking at. The government is now accepting comments from the public. So yeah, this is, this is an older article that was just recently published. I don't know why there is such a wait in time because back on January 22nd. Okay, so we're all updated. We know about this. Let me check it on the chat here. Hey, Katie, what's going on? And Ernesto joined. Do, 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 do. Oh, Michelle says my curiosity wanted to see the weird otter attack. Yeah, well, you know, 
I'm surprised it wasn't on video. <laughs> Help, my dog's being attacked. Let me get the phone up first. Uh, okay, bye, Michelle. Nice to see you. Absolutely. I will be going live every night at either 8 or 10 o'clock. I haven't decided yet. Today was delayed, so maybe 8, maybe 10 next week. We'll never know. Keep an eye on my page. I need to have better opinions for flying with dogs. Oh, options for flying with dogs. 20 pounds up. Yeah, they mentioned something about that, too. That's where I was, like, I couldn't remember exactly what the law said. I'll have to look that up again. Not wanting to put a dog in cargo is probably a huge reason. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely a reason why people don't want to, but they don't want to pay those fees either. I remember, this must have been two years ago, Titan, you know, my little blue bird, he, if I wanted to bring him on board and like store him or was that, was it even that? Did he have to even go in cargo? I don't even remember what the option I was looking at, but I do remember the price tag. And they wanted, in order to fly that parallel out to Florida with me, $200 for a bird this big. I can see why people don't want to pay those fees, you know? Oh yeah, iguanas can be jerk -less. They can be big jerks. Not as bad as otters, of course, but they can cause some serious damage. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what else do we have here? Boom, we have three more to go. House passes bill to allow VA, oh, this is a great one, to fund service dogs to veterans with PTSD. Okay, again, I haven't seen this, but I, I read the headlines and I, I am kind of excited for this. And this might be another yeah, law that I need to look into. Say that would allow the Department of Veterans Affairs to begin a project connecting. Oh no, buffering. Slow death of us all. This is only a 31 second video. Dogs and veterans. The bill, if implemented, could be a critical step to improve veterans' mental health care. The Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Members for Veterans Therapy Act, authored by Representative Steve Stivers, would launch a program presenting federal grants to nonprofits providing service dogs to veterans suffering mental health issues. The VA would assess the effectiveness of dog therapy, according to a Stars and Stripes report. Wait, what they say about the effectiveness? Launch a program presenting federal grants to nonprofits providing service dogs to veterans suffering mental health issues. The VA hmm. would assess the effectiveness of dog therapy, according to a Stars and Stripes report. That's really broad for such a short, short story, but that's cool. Um, Rice ripped. Makes me wonder how that those grants would work exactly. Lawmakers of the House and Senate Committees for Veterans Affairs have prioritized veterans' suicide as a prime issue to address after years of legislative measures and efforts that haven't subdued the crisis, according to the report. Some members... Oh, so I need to find this report. Stars and Stripes? Ooh, is this it? This is the report? No, this is... Come on, why can't I just find the original source? Puppies? <laughs> Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Members for Veterans Therapy Act. That is a mouthful and I also love how they just say puppies. Like these aren't trained to service dogs, these are puppies. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Kick off a pilot program to issue federal grants to nonprofits that provide service dogs to veterans suffering from mental health, blah, 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 mental health issues and require the VA to assess the effectiveness of dog therapy. I'd approved a bill that would lay the groundwork to start funding service dog programs. Okay, so it's like just a go mark, I guess. Uh, have me tackling veteran suicide a top priority. That's great. Inability to make progress on the issue to have called for more creative thinking. Okay. I don't want to see that report. Jeez, if anybody can find that report and send it to me, I would be forever indebted. Veterans of have priority veteran suicide rates. Yeah, it's like practically the same thing. It's, it's quoting itself over here. 
Hacking news. The uh, what's the word? Article from Stars and Stripes. And what did I copy paste? It's not here. So that's great. All right, let me check another chat. Hi, Carol. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you forever. Airlines are weird about birds. Funny, none of my. None of my landlords have ever been weird about birds. Like I say, I have a bird, I have a pet, and they're like, what is it? It's a bird. They're like, oh yeah, whatever. We, we'll waive the pet fee. It's like a, just a small bird, whatever. And I feel like they would do the same. Actually, they have. They've done the same with two of the yellow and Amazons I fostered and a male Malukan cockatoo that was wild caught and a Quaker parrot while I also had Titan. I don't know. They obviously were not aware of the damage that a male Maluka cockatoo could do. Uh, sorry for my excessive comments. Yeah, you do need to go to bed, Liz. It's already almost 11. <laughs> I will press on, though. If you need to go to sleep, go ahead. I will press on. There's only two more, and you can catch up in the morning. You can watch the replay. They'll all be right here waiting for you. Minnesota company settles service animal complaint. Ooh. by Kim David, posted today. It's one more hour till tomorrow. <laughs> no way, it's 56 minutes till tomorrow. St. Paul, KROCAM News, a media company has agreed to pay a former employee $75,000 for telling her she could not bring her service animal to work. Okay, listen. So I have a client right now trying to get $300,000 for being fired from her work for having a service dog in there. These guys only told, were told not to bring the dog. She was fired. Just saying, just saying. You don't wanna mess with the ADA. Do not mess with the ADA. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Human Rights has announced a settlement agreement with Marathon Petroleum Corporation. Really, Marathon, huh? Okay, after the company violated the Minnesota Human Rights Act by discriminating against Laura Ritt, she is an Air Force veteran with a service-related disability and filed a complaint in 2018. Wow, it is 2020 now. After her employer refused to allow her dog to accompany her at work, Ritt told her employer she suffers from PTSD. Ritt no longer works at the company. The settlement agree, it doesn't say if it's related to her not having the dog there or if she quit or if she was fired over it. I would imagine if she was fired over it, the amount of money she could get would be a lot larger. This settlement agreement sends the message that employers have important obligations to provide reasonable accommodations to ensure their employees' dignity, said Minnesota Department of Human Rights Commissioner Rebecca Lucero. More Minnesotians with disabilities are working, yet disability discrimination and employment continues to be one of the largest areas of discrimination we investigate. Nobody knows the laws. Like, that's, that's the gosh darn truth. That's why we must address discrimination in order to build a more equitable, equitable, <laughs> equitable, and inclusive Minnesota. Here's a summary of the case from the Human Rights Department. Ooh, we get a summary? Okay, this is exciting. Oh, and the service animal's name is River. Okay, the case. Ritt worked in the office at the St. Paul Park Refinery as an administrative assistant. She requested to bring her service animal to work so she could perform her job without the symptoms of her service-related disability interfering. The company repeatedly denied her requests, even when a psychiatric nurse practitioner disclosed Rick's, di Rick's diagnosis and explained that a service animal would help prevent the worsening of her disability-related symptoms at work. The service animal was professionally trained to provide Ritt physical and mental comfort. It was also trained to easily maneuver physical barriers in the building where Ritt worked and remained calm when hearing sirens or alarms similar to the ones that went off in the refinery. In September 2019, the Minnesota Department of Human Rights found probable cause that the St. Paul Park Refinery violated the Minnesota Human Rights Act. Under the Rights Act, Employers have a responsibility to accommodate the known disability of an employee. Yeah, and that's, sorry, that's the Human Rights Act, not the ADA necessarily. ADA has guidelines. It's the Human Rights Act that would be the violation of 
employer discrimination. Okay. The investigation found that the service animal would have enabled Rick to perform the essential functions in her job without the interference of her disability-related symptoms. The Minnesota Department of Human Rights also determined that the employer failed to prove the service animal would have disrupted the workplace, posed a health or safety risk, or caused a significant burden to the employer. And in terms of the settlement, too, oh, okay. To build more culturally competent workplace and prevent future discrimination from occurring, the settlement requires St. Paul Park Refinery to reform company policies and procedures so that the reasonable accommodations are made to ensure employees with disabilities can perform their job without facing discrimination. Provide anti-discrimination and anti-bias training to address implicit bias, which is going to be expensive for this company anyway. Promote equity and inclusion and prevent future discrimination and partner with the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development's Vocational Rehabilitation Services to recruit qualified individuals with disabilities to work at the refinery. Oh, you guys gonna to learn today. You guys gonna to learn. The settlement agreed to, the settlement agreement also requires St. Paul Park Refinery to pay $75,000 for payment of lost wages, damages, and attorney fees. Aren't the attorney fees more expensive than that, though? I mean, I guess it kind of depends what kind of attorney, but... Man. Oh! That's terrible. Well, I guess that's them. I hope it's them. I don't know. That could be River. Could be River right there. Okay, let me check in on the chat here. Man, people are bugging... Or... Bugging out, no. People are leaving. <laughs> it's a simple word. House passes. Oh, wait. I think this is the same thing. House passes bills to levy to fund service dogs for veterans PTSD. So this is, again, from Stars and Stripes. Again. Again. Um, yeah, I think this is the same thing. Yeah, top priority. Oh, hi. Well, that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. Is this thing? The books have been frozen on here. Is that right? Guys, I'm, I'm having a frozen screen from Rochester, New York's News Talk KROC station. Is that what you're seeing? Because. Weird. Oh, hello. Could you not see my face the entire time? Wait a minute. Oh, I'm so upset. Oh, no, guys, I've been here the entire time. You're supposed to be able to see me. No! Okay, wait, let me move this. Display capture two, is it this? This one needs to be moved up. Okay, and then this can be moved out. Oh, no, I'm so sad. Why, I was supposed to be back there. Guys, I've been here the entire time. I thought you could see me. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'll know for next time. I need to layer this the right way in the OBS software. I'll be better next time. I promise. I swear. I'll be better. Okay. Well, um, I hope you guys have a great night. That concludes tonight's late night chat. I will see you later. And um, see you next week at either 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. I'll let you know. <laughs> Bye, guys.